What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Frame by Frame, a brand new podcast all about your favorite movies and TV shows. Before we start, I would like to shout out our Patreons, uh, Bucky Blue, Hopple, and Alpaca Tom. If you want to hear your name at the start of every show, make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash save the game media and gain exclusive perks to enhance your experience. And you can also head on over to our website, save the game for any inquiries and additional information. You can also join our Discord server and interact with the hosts and co hosts of each show. The the links to all these will be in the description below. And as always, I'm your host, Amon, and joining me today is Mr. Physical Copy himself. Ethan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, Amon. I'm a little nervous. I talked a big game the other day about my Star Wars knowledge. I'm probably going to make an ass of myself <laughs> today. So we'll see what happens. We're rolling with the punches here. All right. I guess we have to wait and see. And joining me again is Mr. IGN himself, who I still don't have a good nickname for. But uh, Sam, how are you doing? We'll run with it. We'll run with it. We'll it, it works it. as good as any other. I like it. <laughs> All right, guys. So before we head on over to the big news segment and, you know, Star Wars Jeopardy, uh, just some basic light question. Um, what have you guys been watching this week? I'll start off with you, Sam. Um, probably the same as everybody else. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm quite mainstream at the moment, unfortunately. I'm watching The Boys. Oh, yes. Um, obviously waiting for the next Miss Marvel episode. Um, I think that's it. I am actually. I've just started rewatching both Daredevil and Jessica Jones mm. um, because you know some rumors may have been circulating um, Twitter, and I thought mm, maybe it's a good idea to to start <laughs> catching up on those characters. Yeah, uh, Ethan, what about you? So I'll start with TV, and then I'll go into the movie that I watch. So for TV, mm-hmm. I finished season one of The Man in the High Castle on Amazon Prime. I'm about two episodes deep into season two. I love Mm -hmm. shows about alternate history. I'm a history Mm -hmm. buff. I love learning about history, reading the driest history text. So to see alternate timeline sort of movies that are based on history, I I absolutely adore them. And this this is a really well done show. And it makes me really want to read the book because I hear the book is amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've also been watching Stranger Things, not season four, because I never watched it before. Uh, I have binged the first season and half of season two, a little over half Mm -hmm. of season two in the last three days. Uh, me wow. and my wife decided to pick it up, see what all the hype was about, and we got hooked. Um, absolutely love it. Um, the actor that plays Hopper, the cop, mm-hmm. I forget David his Harbour. name. David, David Harbour. David Harbour, yeah. I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's good in almost <laughs> anything he does. And I think oh, yeah. this his character in this is so much fun to watch. And, and it's nice in season two to see them actually develop his character more. So cool. So I'm excited to get into season four and get caught up with the rest of the world. What were you going to say, Amon? Yeah, maybe except for Hellboy, he's been good in everything he's been in. But oh, Hellboy yeah, he was, was Hellboy. Not, I forgot that, about that. Wasn't that wasn't his fault, little... though, was it? That was more. Not really. I think he yeah. did I, good I enough so. with what he was yeah. given for sure. Oh, there's this report this week that said, like, uh, as when the movie launched its first day, he called up Ryan Reynolds and he asked, like, what's it like to be? What's it like for a movie to fl- a movie of yours to flop? You know, because Ryan Reynolds Green Green Lantern flopped pretty hard. Yeah, and uh, he, he called Ryan Reynolds up straight after um, the launch of Hellboy. So that was that was funny. Uh, but yeah, yeah, what else have you been watching, Ethan? Uh, and then the movie I watched, I watched a romance movie with my wife called He's Just Not That Into, Into You, directed by Ken Quapis from 2009. This is an ensemble cast. Bradley Cooper, Scarlett Johansson, Justin Long, Jennifer Connelly, Jennifer Ans- Aniston, Ben Affleck. I mean, this is like the who's who of romance movies back in the late 2000s and early 2010s. <laughs> it was really cool to watch. The The best relationship was definitely Ben Affleck's and Jennifer Aniston's. They were the most wholesome relationship. There were some relationships that went sideways like any other romance movie. Uh, but it was just, you know, that good fun romance, romance movie, rom-com stuff. You know, it's my guilty pleasure. Uh, I like watching those every now and then with my wife. So that was fun to do. And you said you also watched some movies? That was the only movie I watched. So oh, okay. Far. That was the only movie. All right. Yeah. All right. So um, I haven't watched a lot this week. Again, watching The Boys, loving it. I, this season just took it to another level, guys. Like season one and two are great, but season three is just a whole new level. I think it's already in my like top five comic book shows of all time. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, have, I'm loving The Boys, Miss Marvel as well. I still haven't watched episode four, so I'm planning on watching episode four and five together when they both launch. Um I've watched um, uh, the Black Phone, uh, a new movie just did that just came out. It was it was it was a decent movie, a uh, good horror flick, I would say. A uh, very a very simple story, uh, but yeah, I think the director nailed it. You know, just making the most simplest things scary. We uh, may be doing a spoiler exactly. cast on it soon. 
Oh, very soon, maybe. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's all of Watch this week. That's oh no, uh, also One Piece. I'm continuing my <laughs> One Piece grind. I'm on episode 672 right now. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so like two weeks and 672 episodes. I'm proud of that, guys. I'm very proud of Wait, that. Wait, you got all uh, that done in two weeks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What else are you doing? It's... Like, are you eating? Are you bathing? <laughs> Bro, I'm on. Are it's you? Summer, it's summer vacation, dude. Come on. Like, <laughs> I I forgot what that was. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all I've been doing in the, these past uh, this past week. Uh, so let's jump on to the news. So story number one: Taron Egerton is you know. He, uh, so basically, um, you know, uh, he had uh, he basically revealed that he had talked with Marvel for a role, uh, and when asked about what, if he would be playing Wolverine, he said. Uh, and I quote, I don't think it would be wrong to say that. So this obviously, you know, sent fans into frenzy. And, you know, uh, I want to jump over to you guys. What are your thoughts on this? Would you like to see him play Wolverine? Uh, Sam? Um, yeah, I think it it's an interesting one. A lot of people have fan casted him for a while in the role. And I think I'm very split at the minute. I think... I don't know who else I would necessarily cast if it wasn't him because I've had the fan cast ingrained in my head for a long time. But at the same time, it's kind of scarily giving me vibes of John Krasinski as Reed Richards, where that was a fan cast for ages. It seemed to be like the perfect casting and, you know, personal opinion, maybe sort of kind of spoilers. Um Maybe that isn't the best fan casting uh, decision. Um, very much up in the air. So I think I'm not as sold on fan casts as I used to be. Uh, but I think he he fits the bill. Like he's he's shorter, which is if you're going to be more comics accurate, that's a plus. He's apparently buffer than he's ever been. He's been working out and and bulking up. So that also obviously helps with Wolverine. Um, and I think that he, you know, from the Kingsman films, he, his comedic chops are, um, you know, right on the money, really, in terms of what you want for somebody going into the MCU. It would fit into that click very well, I think. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. Um, OK, just curious. Uh, what were your what was your problem with um, John Krasinski's portrayal of Mr. Fantastic? I mean, okay, so he, he he very clearly wasn't given that much to do. Um, and again, this might be partly down to the writing, but for mm -hmm. what's meant to be the, the smartest man in the oh, universe, yeah, I saw this one. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, away. That's, that's obviously yeah. the writing more so than right. anything. But I just, I don't think that, you know, when he showed up, it got a very big pop from the audience and from me. I thought, oh my God, that's amazing. But he didn't leave that much of an impression. Um, mm. So, you know, time will tell. We don't know what's happening with the Fantastic Four actually properly w yeah. within the MCU. That could have very much just been a nod and a wink to the audience. But he just didn't wow me as I was, like, necessarily maybe expecting him to. Right. Uh, well, for me, uh, I think I liked his portrayal. But my main problem was that whole Illuminati segment in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Like, come on, why did you do those characters so dirty? Like, I get Wanda's so powerful, but come on, Black Bolt isn't, you know, how she beat Professor X in his own playing field, like mm -hmm. in his head. That's, come on, I think yeah. that's a little far-fetched plot. You know, there's a, a, quite a lot of plot armor around Wanda uh, and, you know, the whole thing with Mr. Fantastic. Uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Black Bolt here can destroy you with a whisper, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Certainly, the, the, I think that's all down to the writing. Um, Sam mm -hmm. Raimi did say he did not want that uh, se segment included in his movie, but uh, it was something Marvel had uh, kind of forced him to include. So, again, uh, I, I, again, we can't say for sure. Uh, but back to the main topic about Wolverine, Taron Egerton being played by Wolverine. Ethan, I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, I think he'll do a pretty good job as Wolverine. Uh, you know, the, the thing I'm worried about is the whole character of Wolverine is really going to see a shift with him now, you know, when we think of Wolverine, we think of Hugh Jackman's portrayal. It's a very serious, a very gritty, rundown character, someone with a lot of baggage, someone with bags in their eyes, you know, stuff like that. And that's that's how I know Wolverine in like the movie universes. And I love that Wolverine. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Logan. I know it got some crap, but I really liked it. I love Hugh Jackman's portrayal of uh, of Wolverine. Um, so we'll see if this is kind of like a shift 
to put Wolverine's character into the more kind of comedic MCU universe where every character has, you know, their funny side, their serious side and stuff like that. And, you know, I think Taron Egerton, I think he could do it fairly well. I, I loved him in the Kingsman. Uh, Amon had to remind me that he was in the Kingsman because he's looking a little older now. He looked like a little kid in the Kingsman. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed his performance in there. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they make him more of a serious character because from what I know about him, he never really has played that type of character before it seems to always be more of an upbeat kind of preppy you know sort of character that he is um so we'll see it'll be definitely interesting to to see the change in wolverine and and see if it actually hits for me yeah uh i think i'm in the same boat as you guys uh we can't i can't say for sure until we see him but from his like a uh, profile from his appearance i think he could fit the bill you know he's shorter as sam said you know wolverine is five three in the comics i think that's the Right. ideal uh height uh, so and i think he uh, turn against like five seven he's not really five three but again not six five like hugh jackman so again a little more comics accurate and I, I think if you know with those special effects makeup artists he can look a you know a little grittier uh, and a brodier character yeah. but yeah i guess time will tell uh but yeah moving on to story number two guys uh so the, for, for the first time in a long long time people on twitter we're actually praising an MCU costume design. Shocker, right? Like literally every costume design <laughs> from the MCU in the last two or three years has gotten some sort of backlash. But this rumored Neymar costume, which uh, I'll just put us put up on screen in a minute, um, has gotten some praise, guys. Like a lot of praise compared to like what the usual, you know, MCU costumes get, especially what mm -hmm. like, you know, Thor's costume absolutely got shredded in the, you know, by <laughs> comic fans. Uh, but yeah, what are you guys thoughts on it? I, I don't have any complaints, honestly. I, I think that they are obviously shifting Namor's origins away from Aquaman comparisons. Um, they're going for the, the Mayan slash Aztec route, um, which I think is inspired, honestly. Um, you know, I love what DC did with Aquaman. I think making him a Pacific Islander, um, Jason Momoa does a great job over there. But... You know, it's kind of double, it's twofold where it's different enough from Aquaman, but at the same time, hopefully, assuming they do it right, and I trust Ryan Coogler to do it right, it's going to give an added level of representation to sort of Hispanic communities, people from Latin slash South America, anywhere in that region. I think people are going to, as diverse as Wakanda seems to be, I think that whichever city they they turn into Atlantis from that Mayan slash Aztec region. Um, I think that we're going to equally see that, you know, have a, a place that people of those communities can sort of idolize. And in the same way that we think of Wakanda as a real place, almost, I think that the same will be said of Atlantis. Um, and having Tinoch Huerta as Namor in that costume as like its leader, I think again, going to be as iconic as as Chadwick as T'Challa, honestly. Yeah, I definitely noticed. You know, the they're trying to they're really trying to differentiate him from uh, DC, DC's Aquaman because um, again, their comic origins is almost exactly the same. They're both kings of Atlantis. Uh, they both mm -hmm. inhabit Atlantis. Um, so yeah, uh, they're you know they're going going with more of the Aztec Mayan route, uh, which I think in concept looks really cool. Uh, and, you know, like seeing fans praise something coming out of the MCU, you know, like whenever a costume's out, I'm always cautious. I'm like, OK, let's see. Let's see what people are ta saying about it. And then I form my opinion again, because I don't want I don't want that Twitter backlash. But um, but yeah, um, I think in concept, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, I'd like the one with the headpiece. I think it's going to have a lot of CGI in it. And um, yeah, I think they can make it look good. Uh, Ethan, do you have any thoughts to share? Yeah, I think the costume looks awesome. Uh, I think obviously the one with the headpiece is going to be more of a ceremonial type thing. You're only going to see that during like big scenes or like a reveal of, of the character and stuff like that. I think the top one uh, or the first one that you showed is going to be more of uh, what we see throughout the entire movie. I love the gold braces. I, you know, I love the gold belt. I think it looks really cool. And like Sam was saying, it's really cool to see like a Mayan inspired character in the MCU. As far as I can tell, I don't think there's any sort of Mayan or like Aztec or Incan in that realm sort of representation in, in superhero movies or film or TV and stuff like that. So it'll be really cool to see that. And also it's really cool to see a different take on Atlantis. Like you guys were saying, uh, it'll be interesting to see the Atlantean origin story, you know, from the perspective of a South American native, it'll be, it'll be really cool to see and see how they implement that. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you guys there. And now, guys, for the main event of tonight's show, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be doing a Star Wars Jeopardy. I'm going to put Sam and Ethan against each other, and we'll see who who has what it takes to be the next Jedi Master, guys, all right? So, guys, let's start with the Jeopardy. Okay, I'm going to hand it over to um, Ethan first. Uh, so, Ethan, have your pick. Okay. All right, I'm not going to get anything in the sequel trilogy, so I'm already <laughs> writing that off. Um, let's do the ones I grew up with. Let's try prequel tr trilogy for 200. 200, all right. Um, do you guys see the question? Just check. Yep, I yes. see it. All right, okay. In Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan Kenobi and An Anakin Skywalker lead a mission to rescue which kidnapped character? Uh, so, Ethan, any guesses? Why can I not think of this? And I can see the mission in my mind, too. <laughs> she was never kidnapped, was she? Not in episode three. Oh, no. Um, I'm just going to go yeah. out on a whim here and say Amidala. Amidala. Let's see. Let's check the answer. Palpatine. Incorrect. Oh, Palpatine. right. Count Dooku captured him. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> yep. <laughs> see, I told y'all I was going to no. make an ass of myself. It's still, it's still nil nil. It was the opening um, of the movie. Come on. <laughs> uh, Sam, which one are you going to go for? <sighs> Let's go. Original trilogy for 400. 400. All right. Let's see. Who does Luke see in his vision while in the cave during his tra Jedi training with Yoda on Dagobah? Darth Vader. Yep. Darth Vader. Let's see. And Darth you Vader. are indeed correct, Sam. Um, so, again, Ethan, off to a slow start here, bro. It's the first uh, question, Amon. Give me a break here. <laughs> 400 for Sam already. So, Ethan, All back right. to you. We're going to do original trilogy for three. 300 all right yeah let's see what planet does the empire choose to destroy first in order to demonstrate the destructive capability of the death star mm. this was <laughs> come on you gotta planet. know this one it's not naboo it's the other good looking one uh alderaan that's what it's called god <laughs> yes you are indeed correct out. <laughs> i was scared for a second there I yeah, I was scared gonna too. <laughs> but yeah 300 points there for ethan uh back to you sam which one are you gonna pick? okay okay I'm going to play it a little bit safe. I'll go sequel trilogy for 200. All right. Uh, in The Last Jedi, what happens when Snoke orders Kylo to kill Rey? Kylo kills Snoke. You are indeed correct yet again, Sam. Wow. Sam's destroying you here, Ethan. 600 points for Sam there. It's and been four questions. <laughs> <laughs> still, it's still anybody's game. Anybody's game. Uh, All no, right. Just, just for context, Ethan sucks at Jeopardy. Yeah, I'm Project terrible. Talk, he, got, he got zero points last week, and uh, yeah, no. it was embarrassing. Yeah. So it was very embarrassing. Uh, I'm uh, going to try and tie it up and redeem myself. We're going to do prequel for 300. All right. Uh, in the Star Wars prequel trilogy saga, on which planet is the Jedi Temple Headquarters Academy located? Coruscant. Coruscant. You are indeed correct. Yes. Ethan. All right. Tied Coruscant. It up. Here we go. All right. Tied now. I'm off uh, to so a Sam, bad start anymore, Amon. The huh? tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sam, what's the tiebreaker question going to be here? <clears throat> you know, you only live once. Oh, prequel no. trilogy for 500. 500. <laughs> I think Sam's going strategic here because the prequel trilogies are the only one Ethan knows, so he's just gonna, trying to get all of them. Um, in Star Wars Revenge <clears> of the Sith, what are the names of Luke Skywalker's step-uncle and step-aunt? Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. You are indeed yet again. Oh, my goodness. I knew oh Owen. I forgot about what Beru, is, so I would have gone. What is, <laughs> what is going Thank you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That, that's um, the only reason I remembered Owen. Good refresher. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to can... step up my game here. Original 500. Ooh. Ooh, this is going to be bad. During his confrontation with the with Emperor Palpatine and, Dar uh, and Darth Vader on the second Death Star, what does Luke try to conceal? What does he try to conceal? Palpatine and Darth Vader on the second okay, Death Star. Okay, I, I think Luke I should have phrased it better. What slash who does he try to conceal? Slash who does he try and conceal? He doesn't try and conceal anybody from what I can remember. Does he try and conceal? No, he wouldn't need to conceal his hand. That doesn't make sense, does it? I'm going to go with his hand because that's all I got. That's all I can think of. Uh, or lack thereof. 
the fact that he has, has a, a sister. sister. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, come yeah. on, Ethan. You're <laughs> you're behind. You're behind once again. Uh, Sam, which one are you going for this time? Uh, sequel trilogy for three hundred. Three hundred. Let's see. The rise of Skywalker. In the rise of Skywalker, Ray finally learns the truth about her origins. She is, in fact, what? A Palpatine. You are once again correct. So again, uh, I don't know how many points does that put you at. Okay. One thousand three hundred four hundred, right? Yeah. Wow. All right. We're running out of non-sequel trilogy <laughs> stuff, so I, <laughs> yeah, I need no, to right. get these. I need to get these. Uh, uh, Ethan, come on. I gotta go balls to the wall. Prequel four hundred. All right. Um, in Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith, which character eventually kills General Grievous? Doesn't Obi Wan kill Grievous? Yeah. You are indeed yeah. correct, Ethan. You're at one. <laughs> thought it was a trick question there for a second <laughs> uh sam back to you you know what screw it sequel trilogy 500 sequel trilogy 500 according to luke what prompted kylo to destroy the new jedi order uh oh, that's a tough question um <laughs> because he believed that luke wanted to kill him Let's have a look at the answer. The fact that Luke contemplated to kill Kylo, you are indeed correct once again, Sam. 1,900. It's all over oh, now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, so, Ethan, go back. I need a clean sweep to tie. <laughs> so, I mean, I can pick anything at this point. Uh, let's just do original trilogy for 200. Original trilogy for two hundred is what people what people found R two D two and C three PO roaming uh, the ta- pardon Jawas Jawas you are indeed correct Ethan uh, I think Ethan's trying to make a comeback here let's see if he can no do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam back to you sequel trilogy four hundred <laughs> I mean if you get this right there's no there's no hope for Ethan but uh yeah, yeah it's when okay. the force awakens begins what planet is the new republic capital new republic's capital okay it is i can picture it mhm <laughs> uh, no. get that picture out of your mouth come on if he, if he can't get it do i get a guess I mean, at this point, yeah, I think I'd give you a guess. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get it. All right, Ethan. I have no one? clue, like I said, so I'm just going to throw a name out there. Dantooine. <laughs> Dantooine. All right. Uh, the answer is Hosnian Prime. Yeah, I, know. I don't know what that is. No chats. No right. chats. Uh, back to you, Sam. Ethan. Uh, which one are you going to uh, go for? Prequel 100. Prequel 100. In the Star Wars prequel trilogy saga, what term is mainly used for a Jedi trainee? Padawan. You're correct. That puts you at 1,300. Yay. Um, Sam, <laughs> which let's, one are you going to go for? Let's make Ethan suffer. Original trilogy 100. <laughs> All right. Damn you. What is the name of the giant four-legged walkers used by the Empire during the Battle of Hoth? AT-ATs. Yep. You are indeed correct, Sam, at the re- with the record of 2,000 points here. Impressive victory. And Ethan. M- maybe I get the 100. Out. That's a possibility. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe it's I so mean, easy. You're saving grace here. Uh, at the beginning of The Force Awakens, Resistance pilot named Poe Dameron receives something vitally important that Kylo Ren and the stormtroopers are desperate to retrieve. What is it? Uh, I don't know. A holocron? Can Close. I Come, on. Close. Come on, Ethan. It, I'm gonna give you one more guess. Come on. I I know what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know what the hell it right, is. Time's running out. Uh, Get, Sam, do you want to steal this one? It's Luke Skywalker's coordinates. Oh, okay. You are indeed correct. A map to Luke Skywalker's location, and that puts Sam at two thousand one hundred. Can points. you can you tell I slept through most of the sequel trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry to sequel trilogy lover, lovers out there, but uh, <laughs> no. but yeah, guys, that that concluded the first ever you know frame by frame Jeopardy. 
Um, as you all know, um, Sam is the first ever frame by frame Jeopardy winner with a whopping two, 2,100 points. And uh, Ethan comes second in place with th- 1,300 points. I will lose enough, every which time. Is, which is not a bad showing for Ethan, guys. You know, like on X Talk, he's faced enough embarrassments. He's lost to yeah. me. He's lost to Kevin. He's lost to Tom. He's lost I've to gotten a goose twice, egg before. And he got Good zero, zero points <laughs> twice yeah. in a row. Yeah, he's I got did. zero points twice in a row. So it wasn't not as chance. bad, I would say. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. Make sure to let us know your thoughts about uh, Taron Egerton playing Wolverine. Name or new design in the comment section below. Um, and Ethan, where can I find you? They can find me at White Cedar one on Twitter and Gravy3448 on Xbox. Sam, where can we find you? You can find me at Sam Haney on Twitter. That's H-E-A-N-E-Y. And you can find me on Twitter at Amon underscore M05. Make sure to follow Save the Game Media now. It's kind of, it feels kind of weird. I'm still used to Project X Talk. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Save the Game Media now on Twitter at Save at Save Game Media. Uh, and yeah, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel. we got a constant stream of content coming from all our four different podcasts. We've got a bunch of spoiler casts coming next week. Uh, and yeah, peace. Peace. Boom.